Today I'm going to be telling you about a bobbin winder accessory I've made for the electric EO Wheel 6. I'll be showing you both how I made it and how it functions today. So here it is, or at least portion of it. So all of the different parts that I'm going to be talking about were either purchased on McMaster's or uh, I 3D printed them. So this steel bar and this bearing I got from McMaster's and you could get them at various other places. I'll have links to them in the show notes and that will, they'll, they'll provide specs there on exactly what the part is. So if you want to purchase it somewhere else, that's perfectly fine. But, um, that's where I got the parts. Um, and then other parts are 3D printed like this little gold plastic piece. So, uh, the way that I put this plastic piece and this bearing, these are all stuck together at this point because I kind of hammered it on to this, um, or with a rubber mallet, I forced it onto this bar because I don't want this part twisting. I also don't want this bearing uh, falling off too easily. So both of these are really attached pretty well to this rod. And uh, that's just by virtue of the tolerances I used on the 3D printed part. So the next part I have is this is just a simulation of a weaving bobbin and that's sort of the bobbin I'll be using for the demonstration today. I'll also talk about using other bobbins like the bobbins that come with the electric eel wheel 6 or the electric eel wheel nano or um, other spinning wheels. But uh, first I'll show you this weaving bobbin because I know a lot of people want this kind of a device for weaving bobbins or just storage bobbins which would work very similar to this. But uh, basically, it presses into these ramped off portions of the plastic, and this plastic piece fits on a little easier, but still has some friction. Uh, so that will hold this bobbin, and now it won't spin. Um, I mean, I can force it to spin, but it has enough friction that it's not going to easily spin. So it's kind of held in place and will spin when this metal rod spins, and that's sort of what you want. You want to always make sure that the bobbin is held in place. And then the last piece is this bearing and we just slide that into place. So then we just take this bobbin winder accessory and put it onto the base of the electric eel wheel six where we've already removed the flyer. And then we put the drive belt here into the groove and we're ready to spin a bobbin. Now I've already talked a little bit about doing bobbin winding with a spindle accessory that sort of sticks off the front with the original flyer. And while that's easier to design or to put on and you don't need extra parts to do it, uh, it's going to be unbalanced and it's really not as optimal a solution as this. Uh, this is really going to have things balanced. You can go at full speed. And as I'll show you in a little bit, everything's super smooth. Another advantage of this is that you can adjust the size of this pulley. And basically, the larger the pulley, uh, the faster it will spin. So this is a really small one. In the files that I upload, I'm going to have three different sizes of pulleys. And you'll be able to select. And the bigger the pulley, the faster the bobbin will spin. So what I'll be showing you here is sort of the slowest of the options. And you'll see it's still pretty fast, but it uh, can be faster. So all you do is you tie uh, your yarn that you're going to be putting on the bobbin on like that. And you then turn it on and it will start spinning. And it's just that easy. You'll notice that the metal bar is sticking out the ends. That's because I bought a one foot long bar and didn't do anything to shorten it. It would be not too difficult to cut it off and then you'd have the right length bar, but it doesn't do any harm. So I just left it the length that I got it because that's easier and uh, there's not really a downside to having the bar stick off, except that it's a little harder to transport if you're taking it to different places. One cool thing that you might be able to do is get an even longer bar and you could really sort of shape the end uh, to be like an ultimate spindle for the electric EO wheel six. You could really increase the speed a lot with this spindle and, and really get things moving a lot um, more smoothly with this kind of a spindle than with the 3D attachment spindles that I've had. Like this will 
uh, be perfectly straight. So that would be cool, but it would require probably a lathe. Maybe you could actually just sort of spin it. If you got a softer bar like brass or aluminum, maybe you could actually shape it in this device if you just uh, started spinning it and had like a very coarse uh, metal sandpaper and just sort of formed it into the shape you want, that might work. Uh, this steel bar, it would not be practical to do that. But with a softer bar, uh, like uh, aluminum, maybe you could try doing that and make like the ultimate spindle for the electric eel wheel six. If anyone does that, let me know. I'd be pretty, pretty cool to see that. I don't think I'm going to take the time to try that one myself though. So that's how weaving bobbins work. And a lot of storage bobbins work the same way. In fact, most other bobbins work that way. However, with the bearings that I've made for the electric eel wheel five and six, I put these bearings inside of them, which make them ultra smooth and quiet. But the problem with that is because there's a bearing right there, you, you can't just use a clamping system like this to hold them in place because even when they're clamped, they're still gonna spin because you're just clamping against the bearings, which um, are really designed to spin easily. So I thought of making sort of another device like this that's a little bit more elaborate and can sort of clamp up against the side of the bobbins, but I kind of realized that that's not necessary. What works really well uh, in my testing is just taking a standard rubber band and you can just wrap it around the bobbin on the inside once, or you can even go through these outer holes if you don't wanna go on the inside of the bobbin with the rubber band where your fiber will be. But then after you've done that, just wrap it around the metal post a few times. And that's really all you need to do. I mean, that right there prevents the bobbin from spinning. And now you can go and put it onto the electric eel wheel six, just like the other one, and everything will uh, work perfectly. I mean, it's a little spongy, but it's not going to keep spinning. Like eventually it's going to stop. It springs back to where it was. This works really well. I've done um, some spinning. I, I filled up a few bobbins this way and I was really impressed. I was like, is something this simple going to work? But it really does. So I think that, you know, this post for ones where you can clamp up against them and they don't have bearings works great. And for ones that do have bearings, just use a, a rubber band and that works great for those. So uh, as always, I'm always improving designs. And if people have ideas on how this could be improved, let me know. But uh, it seems to work really well. And I hope people appreciate it. Uh, check the show notes, like I said, for details on where to get the plastic 3D printed parts. I'm giving away the files for free like I always do. And uh, the metal parts, I, I just point you at a few at, at a store where they sell them. But with the details there, you'll be able to purchase them at hopefully other stores around the world. Thanks for watching.